Hello, and thanks for joining us for an overview of the Pennsylvania Room at Center County Library and Historical Museum. My name is Robin Dajaratu, and I'm pleased to help answer this question. What is the Pennsylvania Room? And relatedly, what do you have there? So the Pennsylvania Room is a genealogical and historical reference library and it's part of Center County Library and Historical Museum, which is a public library system in, you guessed it, Center County, Pennsylvania. The Pennsylvania Room is a what's called a special library. So special libraries have highly specialized resources uh, that focus on a particular topic or area of interest. And they typically serve a, a very specific clientele with often a, a specific research interest. Um, so in this case, we really focus on genealogical and local history reference materials, and our services really are geared toward meeting the needs of genealogists, historians, and people doing humanities research. So the Pennsylvania Room is located in the same building as the Historical Museum. Um, and we, in addition to sharing our building, do share some research interests. There is overlap between the Pennsylvania Room and the Historical Museum. Uh, we all, it's one staff that serves both of those areas. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a little bit. Uh, I do wanna mention that uh, the Pennsylvania Room is not the same thing as the Center County Historical Society or the Center County Genealogical Society. Uh, those are both organizations that exist. They're organi organizations that we have a really great relationship with, but we are, we are a little bit different in, in what we do and how we do it. But the big thing is that the Pennsylvania Room ultimately is a research destination for genealogy, local history, and humanities researchers. So what comprises the Pennsylvania Room collection? What does it include? Well, as we're a library, it's probably no surprise to you that uh, part of our bread and butter is a reference book collection. But we have lots of other resources uh, that span different formats and uh, different creators and have different applications. So let's go ahead and, and dive right in. There's a list on the screen of everything I'm going to discuss today. Uh, family history clipping files, newspapers, county records, research collections, the museum, uh, even digital resources. And I'll wrap up just by sharing some of the projects that we're working on to try to make more resources accessible to the public. So let's start with the reference book collection. So our reference book collection includes about 3,500 titles. So when I say titles, I mean books. So 35 individual books. Uh, and there are sort of three different subsets within that 3,500. So first we have county specific reference books for Pennsylvania counties. So these are very micro level resources that address on the county or even the township or borough level, different parts of records. So you might find a township history, a church record, um, or church records rather, uh, will abstracts from a certain county. So these are very specific to a particular township, borough, or county typically. Those county specific reference books for Pennsylvania counties are what make us a Pennsylvania room. So that county by county reference collection is what part of what makes us a Pennsylvania room. In addition to those resources, we also have surname specific reference books. So these are typically compiled genealogical research for a particular family. So I've listed an example on the slide. John and Hannah Armand Hall from Delaware to Center County, PA. Information based on family genealogies by Nancy Lee Stover. That is the type of title we see in this part of our collection. They typically deal with a specific family line. And finally, to round out our reference book collection, we have the general 
genealogical and historical reference books component. And these are not specific to Center County or even to Pennsylvania, but they provide uh, records such as immigration. So we have a number of passenger list books. Uh, there are records for armed conflicts, such as the Civil War. Uh, in this part of the collection, we also find regional history and, and so much more uh, is really settled in this part of the collection. So a couple of notes. Fortunately, all of these books are cataloged and are searchable in the Center County Library and Historical Museum catalog, which you can access on our website, and I'll show you in just a moment. It's also important to note that these books are what's called non-circulating, which is library speak, for we do not check them out, and they have to be used on site in the Pennsylvania room. So I want to briefly show you how to search our reference book collection on the library's website. So the first thing you'll need to do to do this is uh, open a web browser and navigate to www.centercountylibrary.org. Uh, and you can see I've included a little screenshot from my web browser on this slide. So it's very easy to search the reference collection. You'll notice there's a white bar toward the top in the middle of your screen where it says search books, audiobooks, etc. And you can either type the full name of a book in there or a keyword like the last name Stover or Belfont or Presbyterian. And then you can click on search. Uh, and then on your results page, you can then further refine it to look at only the Pennsylvania Rooms records. So let me show you how to do that live. So to conduct what I'm calling a live search, which is just me showing you how to search the library catalog in real time, I am going to open a web browser and I'm going to navigate to www.center, spelled with an R-E, countylibrary.org. And capitalization does not matter. I have just capitalized the C in center and county and the L in library so that it's easy to recognize what those words are. All right, so now, as you can see, I am in my web browser. This is our library webpage. And as you saw on the last slide right here in the top or toward the top and the middle of the screen is a search books, audiobooks, movies bar. And if I click, I can see the cursor pop up and I can search for anything I want. Uh, so in this case, we were talking about uh, Nancy Stover earlier, the author. So I'm going to type in Stover family as my search term and then click on the search button. All right. Very simply, this has shown me that we have within the whole library system, so not necessarily just the PA room, there are 16 items that are associated with the word Stover family. So if I open up the Stover family from Stafford, Baden, Germany to Center County, Pennsylvania, I can get a little bit of information about this particular item. If I, uh, down here at these tabs, as you can see me uh, kind of hovering over each of them. If I click on holdings and scroll down, it will show me a little bit more about where I can find that particular item. Now, what if I'm uh, searching for something that uh, is a little less specific than Stover family? So I'm going to use as an example, kind of a local history uh, reference, which is Johnstown flood which happened very close to where I'm located here in Belfont, Pennsylvania. So I'm typing Johnstown flood in the search bar and then clicking on the search button. And you can see that we've got 31 results. Um, and just in this first result that I'm retrieving, I can see, okay, this is probably not quite what I'm looking for. This is an audio book. Uh, it looks like this isn't necessarily the reference material that I'm looking for that I would use for research, although maybe it is. Uh, I can see that it's held at Sklo Library and at Center County Library in Belfont, but that's not the Pennsylvania room. 
So on the left side of the screen are some filters and you can see we're going to use those to narrow our search. And there are two areas that in this section on the left that I want to draw your attention to. The first is Center County Library Historical Museum under Available Now. So if I click on Center County Library Historical Museum, that will pull every item that is currently available on the shelf in the Pennsylvania room. Um, and I understand it's a little confusing. It says Center County Library Historical Museum. That will actually be changing in a few weeks, um, but hasn't changed yet. So eventually this will say Pennsylvania room. But for now, it says Center County Library Historical Museum. Now, the tricky thing about this um, is that if I am looking under available now, there are a couple of items that I might not be seeing. Um, anything that the library has uh, checked out because we have it in our cataloging department because it's being repaired or uh, if something was being repaired and it just wasn't checked back in properly. Uh, maybe that we have a particular item on a short term loan at another research facility for someone to use. So I'm going to X out this filter to remove the filter. We're going to just scroll down. So that was under available now. And there were five results in the Pennsylvania room. But if I scroll down under location. And I look at that same location. So Center County Library Historical Museum, you can see that there are nine results. And I happen to know that this is the case because we have a few items related to the Johnstown flood out for repairs right now. So um, it's always helpful if you're looking for specific titles to actually filter out to make sure you're only looking at titles that are held by the Pennsylvania room, but then also to look at, okay, is, am I looking at the things that are available now? Or am I looking at things that are, that have the Pennsylvania room as their home location? So I encourage you to come to our website and play around with this a little bit, play around with this live search and see what you find. Um, many of the items that I'm going to talk about today are available to search, not all of them, but it is definitely worth exploring. So now that we have an idea of how to search for those books, let's look at other records that are available in the Pennsylvania room. The first is the family history clipping files. So this is a very large uh, filing cabinet, as you can see from the photograph. Um, and it contains loose leaf papers that contain information that would be useful for a genealogist. So the records that we find, or copies typically of records that we find in here really run the gamut. I mean, we find copies or even original letters, Bible transcriptions, essays on family history. Uh, sometimes we'll find copies of pension records. There is all sorts of content in this particular filing cabinet. Um, it's arranged alphabetically by surname. Uh, in a case where a, a person's surname, there might not be enough enough loose leaf papers to justify that last name having its very own folder. Uh, we'll put that in the a folder with the first initial of the surname. Uh, I want to emphasize this is not comprehensive by any stretch of the imagination, but it, it is an additional resource. So some families have folders, others do not. Uh, and it is worth mentioning, mentioning that the files in this filing cabinet are not indexed or cataloged and they have to be searched manually, which means when you visit, you have to go to the filing cabinet and open it up and see if there's anything related to your ancestors in the filing cabinet. Uh, with that said, it adds a lot of value. There are some neat resources in the cabinet that uh, don't have a, another appropriate home in our collection. So we're glad to make them available to people. Another component of our collection are the indexes that we make available to researchers. So you may already be familiar with indexes, but an index essentially helps a researcher locate records that will serve that research. So in the world of genealogy in particular, um, genealogical indexes 
include information from multiple sources. So for example, an index to marriages might have information about marriages mar from three different newspapers, as well as 10 different sets of church records. So you could search for one marriage in multiple sources at once. So it's, it's efficient. Now, with that said, I would, I would be remiss if I didn't say that indexes are a helpful starting point, but there is really no reality in which they are truly comprehensive. Um, you know, even just thinking about historical newspapers, it, it's very easy when you're going through a newspaper just to simply miss a particular announcement. Um, so just because you don't see a particular, for example, a particular marriage listed in a marriage index, it doesn't mean there's not a record of it. It's just not indexed. So in the Pennsylvania room, we provide access to a number of genealogical indexes. So this includes um, center county death notices and obituaries. Uh, and these are indexed between the years 1821 all the way to 2020. Uh, the Center County Pennsylvania Marriage Index covers 1764 to 2005. The Center County Births Index and Death Records Index uh, both cover 1893 to 1905. It's a pretty narrow period of time uh, because until 1893, those life events weren't registered by government. Um, in 1893, Center County started registering births and deaths. Uh, in 1905, that reporting transitioned to the level of the Commonwealth. So there's a narrow period of time, but still 12 years of research that we can help people with. Uh, and finally, we have the Center County Genealogical Society's Cemetery Series. Uh, we have that index available for people to use. So these are loaded onto all of the computers in the Pennsylvania room for our visitors to search. So the next type of resource I want to highlight are our maps and our atlases. So atlases are available uh, for, I've listed on the slide individual counties. Sometimes there are, are other regions as well, but generally you would look at a county atlas. Um, and we focus again on, on Pennsylvania atlases generally. Um, many of the atlases are historical. Uh, but some are more recent. I would say the one that gets the most use is the uh, 1874 Pomeroy's Atlas of Center County because it has some really interesting genealogical information on it as well. Uh, atlases, uh, as you can see from the photograph, they all have uh, those white spine labels on them, uh, which means that they can be searched via the library's website. So using the same strategies that I showed you a few minutes ago, you can search for a center county atlas or a Clearfield County atlas. In addition to our atlas collection, we also have both large format and small format. So that's, that's the size maps uh, of towns, townships, and boroughs, especially in center county. So some of these are hand-drawn maps, while others are topographical maps. The, each map kind of varies in um, helpfulness depending on what your research need is. I do want to note that these have to be searched in manually. We do have a print inventory of maps available on site for you to look at, but that inventory is not currently available online. Next, we have center county newspapers. The Pennsylvania Room uh, is home to newspapers that were published in Center County uh, as early as 1821. And uh, those newspapers we are able to provide access to in a couple of different formats. So most of our researchers, I would say, work with microfilm, so 35 millimeter microfilm. And you can actually see a photograph on the screen. Uh, you've got two computer workstations with microfilm readers and computer monitors that have been rotated 90 degrees to make it easier to look at those long newspapers. Uh, and on the left, we've got the microfilm cabinets. So most people access our newspapers on microfilm, but we do also have some newspapers only available to look at in bound volumes. Uh, and sometimes we have individual issues. As a general rule, 
obituaries and marriage announcements in our newspapers have been indexed. Um, as I mentioned, when we were talking about indexes, no index is totally comprehensive. But those two pieces of, or those two life events are generally indexed. If, however, you're looking for a newspaper mention of something else, uh, you will end up needing to search manually for other types of inquiries. So if you know that, you know, your grandmother had twins in 1895 and you think that it might be mentioned in the newspaper, you will be looking at individual issues of newspapers from around that point of time. Uh, I do want to mention that we have moved a number of our fragile newspapers off of the floor, meaning that they've been removed from public areas and can only be accessed or handled by staff. And that's important just because a newspaper was never intended to last more than 100 years. That's not what it was designed to do. Um, so it is very fragile. But our staff is perfectly equipped to make copies or scans of things so that you can still work with the newspapers themselves. So you're probably wondering what newspapers we hold. <laughs> uh, so I've included a list on the screen, the Belfont Daily News, the Belfont Morning News, the Belfont Patriot, the Belfont Republican, Berichter und Unzeiger, Center Berichter, Center Daily Times, Center Democrat, Center Reporter, the Democratic Watchman, the Democratic Whig, the Howard Hustler, Keystone Gazette, Milheim Journal, Phillipsburg Journal, Phillipsburg Daily Journal, Snowshoe Times, and the Weekly Hornet. And I've delineated on the screen with an asterisk the newspapers that have been removed from public areas in their entirety. So in addition to the actual newspapers themselves, we do have a few filing cabinets full of what we call the newspaper clipping files. So these are collections of clippings from newspapers, both local level newspapers and national new newspapers related to topics that local people might be interested in. Uh, I would say that while there is absolutely relevance to genealogical research, we typically see our local history researchers turning to these files the most. Um, much the same as some of these other resources, these files have to be searched manually. Uh, we have a print inventory of topics that we have folders for available um, that can help when you're determining whether a file exists for a topic. So folders exist for things like events, so um, fires, bicentennial, things of that nature, uh, business and industries, people of interest, towns, townships, boroughs, architecture, buildings, clubs and organizations, and more. So we are also here at the Pennsylvania Room, home to original center county government records. So when I say government record, I mean a, an actual official county record. Um, and our organization, Center County Library and Historical Museum, serves as caretaker for some of Center County's oldest government records to ensure that they remain accessible to people in Center County. So in, I believe, the 1970s, the county was starting to be squeezed for space uh, and needed to move some of its historic records out of its primary buildings. Uh, and rather than turn those over to the Pennsylvania State Archives in Harrisburg, our organization agreed to act as caretaker of those records. Uh, while we have many, many records uh, on site that belong to this collection, the, the records that are accessed most frequently by genealogists include uh, marriage license applications, so 1885 to 1987 are in our building, uh, tax assessment records, uh, held from 1801 to 1965, probate and estate files from 1800 to 1990, orphans court dockets from 1802 to 1971, civil and criminal court papers from 1800 to 1875, 
as well as road petitions from 1800 to 1956. Um, a complete inventory of all of the original government records that are housed in our building, um, including others that are not listed here, is available on site. And this is just a little a little break for photos. Uh, so our the government records are stored in the basement of our building, but as basements go, it's not actually that bad. Um, but as you can see here, we have all sorts of storage solutions sorted out and uh, there is a good amount of light and workspace for people to to access all of these records when we are open. So in addition to the resources that I've discussed so far, I do want to highlight some of our unique genealogical research collections. So these are compiled research from experienced and often prolific genealogists. And there are two that people use frequently that I would like to highlight. Um, the first is the Spangler Collection. This is named for its creator, Adela Fink Spangler, who was particularly active in the first half of the 1900s. Um, and her work uh, includes a fully indexed genealogical research collection compiled in the early 1900s. Um, her work is compiled in over a hundred notebooks that are available for researchers to access. And within those notebooks, you find things like tombstone in inscriptions, newspaper obituaries, marriage records, Bible transcriptions, church records, family records, and tax lists. Mrs. Spangler, the, so the Spangler collection is indexed in a 250,000 card catalog, uh, and it's indexed by surname. As you can probably imagine at this point in time, that card catalog is not digitized. It has to be manually searched on site. Uh, similar to the Spangler collection is the J. Marvin Lee collection. Uh, Mr. Lee was another prolific genealogical researcher, and his research uh, encompasses uh, research compiled between 1940 and 1970, approximately. And his research is organized a little bit differently. It includes more family group sheets, some documentation, as well as some correspondence. Um, the Lee collection is also indexed in a card catalog and must be manually searched. So I mentioned before that the historical museum part of Center County Library and Historical Museum is housed in the same building as the Pennsylvania Room. Uh, and the Pennsylvania Room and Historical Museum are both served by one staff, one, one group of staff. Um, the Historical Museum collection is separate from the Pennsylvania Room, though understandably there's some overlap. And that collection includes approximately 35,800 objects. And those objects span many different formats. So images, printed materials, business records, apparel, textiles, artwork, furniture, dolls, dinnerware, and electronic media. With that said, some museum items may be of relevance to researchers. It really just depends on what you are searching for. Most frequently, I would say people ask, can, can you tell me if you have any photographs of my family members? Um, so with all of that in mind, the inventory of the museum is not currently available for search by the public, but staff can complete searches of our holdings when requested in advance via email. So just to give us time to access the most up-to-date inventory because the inventory is actually still in process, it's still being refined, um, requests via email for museum searches are the most reasonable for us to complete. In the Pennsylvania Room, we also are able to provide access to a number of digital resources, and I'd like to highlight two. So the first resource is the Center County Online Information System, also known as Webia. And Webia is the website that one uses to search for digitized center county government records. 
Um, so these records can include um, deeds, estates, uh, tax assessments, a number of other types of types of records. Uh, I will say there is some overlap with the records that are held in the Pennsylvania room. Some of the resources in the Pennsylvania room have been digitized and are available on Webia. Webia is a pay per click resource, meaning that you as a member of the public sitting at home in your jammies, uh, if you want to access Webia, you will have to pay a certain amount of money. So let's say, you know, $200 and that will give you so many clicks within the system. Um, we are able to provide access to that resource um, to you without you having to pay that money <laughs> here in house. Don't worry, we pay for it. But um, it is a really useful resource, particularly if you're trying to do any sort of research that's tied to a particular property. Uh, the one caveat with using Webia is because we do pay per click, uh, we do need to provide you with training prior to you using it because of how uh, costly it can be to use. The other resource that we provide access to on site is Ancestry Library Edition. So you may be familiar with a company called Ancestry.com, which is one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, ancestry and genealogy research tools, uh, digital tools in the world. So Ancestry Library Edition is a library database that connects users, so you, the user, to records that are held by Ancestry.com for free, for free to you. Um, so essentially you're searching uh, most of the records that you would be searching with a personal subscription to Ancestry.com using this library database that you do not have to pay for. Typically, you would only be able to use Ancestry Library Edition in the Pennsylvania room or in another location of Center County Library and Historical Museum or uh, at our partners at SCLO Center Region Library. Uh, because of the pandemic, ProQuest and its partner Ancestry have temporarily expanded Ancestry Library ed Edition access to our library card holders working remotely as a courtesy through at least the end of 2021. So if you have a library card from either Center County Library and Historical Museum or SCLO Center Region Library, you can access Ancestry Library Edition from home. Um, after temp expanded access is ended, you will still be able to access Ancestry Library Edition on site. So I do want to highlight just a few current projects and future plans. Um, our team is always trying to make resources and records more accessible to the public. Uh, we partner with our, we have a, a courageous and devoted volunteer team that works very hard to help us make resources available. Um, we actually, I have got a photo here of the card catalog from that, that 250,000 card catalog from the Spangler collection. We have a volunteer who comes in every week and is working on digital, digitizing the information on every single one of those cards. That's just an example of what our volunteers can do. Uh, we also have community partners that are so valuable to us, like the, the Center County Genealogical Society, who are constantly working to improve the searchability of our collection and resources. So right now we're working on um, digitizing a number of indexes. So the probate and estate file card catalog, uh, the Spangler index card catalog, as I mentioned, uh, we're in the process of converting a number of outdated resources that are on CD-ROM. Um, and we're working on making a number of unique genealogy research collections available. Some additional projects that I would love to see come to fruition in the next couple of years includes indexing center county tax assessments and indexing of center county church records. So there are a lot of interesting, neat things happening um, and we are working really hard to make things more discoverable for our researchers and our patrons. So with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up. 
but on the screen you'll see information for how to get in touch with us. Uh, the Pennsylvania Room is located in this beautiful stone house at the corner of Allegheny and Howard Streets. Uh, 203 North Allegheny Street is the address. I want to highlight that uh, our phone number is 814-355-1516 and we have a new phone extension. It is 1007. Uh, and our team can always be reached at PA room at centercountylibrary.org. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. Uh, you'll notice that at the bottom of the video underneath, you can actually download a copy of the slides for your own records. Uh, we hope that you'll pay a visit to us soon and we are really appreciative of your time and watching this today. Thank you.